Right, good morning then everyone as we head into European trade on Wednesday the 14th of February. Um, pretty busy kind of last 24 hours of market with US inflation yesterday. We had UK inflation about half an hour ago and we also had a, we also had UK labour market figures yesterday. But we'll cover them once we go over to the to the calendar. We'll have a bit of a bit of a look down but really that's all that these headlines are going to be talking about. Dollar range as hot inflation cools Fed cut bets stocks extend slide dollar roids uh, treasury yields higher again that's just what mark's going to be talking about and i'm likely to talk about certainly for the next few days sterling falls after milder uk inflation numbers i guess not really what we were hoping for on, on sterling we were hoping for positive data and then sterling you know, should have should, would have ripped off the back of it but it's not what we got unfortunately most of the time you sit there hoping for a couple of things to line up, but it doesn't happen in trading, so you got to kind of reevaluate the situation and uh, move on, I suppose. Um, equity futures, US equity futures slightly higher, European equity futures slightly lower. You know, they were lower across the board yesterday. Those UK infl- That US inflation figure sorry, pushed stock indexes lower across the board. Commodities relatively mixed. They were a bit of a choppy session on the majority of them yesterday. Gold, you know, a bit of downside off the back of CPI as well. Um, bond yields lower. I wouldn't read too much into bond yields being lower. I wouldn't read too much into the price action this morning, really, on anything other than on, and than sterling. Like the US dollar. You'll see what I mean when I get over to the charts. Like, you know, the US dollar was higher across the board yesterday. Yields were higher across the board yesterday. Stocks were lower across the board yesterday. That was the expected reaction to, you know, Bassett Hawkish Central Bank, but less of a need for interest rate cuts means you know rate cut bets get priced out if that makes sense and and you know cause a bit of we'll say risk off risk off trading in that respect. But and certainly with the currency and the and the stock index, you know yields pushing higher indication of higher interest rates or in this case less of lower interest rates if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, we just kind of get pullbacks across the board on the majority of major asset classes. FX, you know, Aussie and Kiwi, they're up today, but they were down yesterday, so I'm not going to read too much into that. Really, Sterling's the only one on, on, on the kind of this list of currencies where I think you can read to read into the uh, read into the price action. You can see Sterling lower across the board, which is annoying. I mean, I still don't fully change my opinion on Sterling. I mean, we'll have a look once we come around to it in a minute. You know, inflation was expected to take higher in the UK. It's not what we got, though. We just, just not changed from the previous month, but month over month figure minus 0.6 percent i suppose it is good progress getting inflation under control for the uk but we'll flick across here and we can see these inflation prints from the us yesterday you know with the headline figure year over year expected 2.9 month over month headline figure expected 0.2 core cpi year over year 3.7 month over month 0.3 and we beat consensus on all four of them so inflation not higher <clears throat> right the core cpi was higher than the previous month you um core cpi higher in line with the previous year but the the total rate of inflation on month over month year over year month over month was higher year over year and then slightly lower so in terms of yearly inflation hasn't really hasn't really picked up too much but all higher than consensus and inflation not slowing the way the central bank would hope and it's still above three percent which is still too high for the central bank which means that there is still a bit more work to do and it does not call for any need for rate cuts just yet the economy is performing well inflation is remaining sticky it was never going to be a linear a linear straight line down in inflation it is proving to be a bit sticky at the minute that was to be expected at some point and that is the point that we are at now so reduces the need for interest rate cuts we will still get interest rate cuts nothing's changed in that respect so markets had priced in six fed had said three it's kind of looking a little bit more like the fed are right for once over the last three years but looks like they are right for um looks like they're right for now um but Apart from that, then you got UK inflation, UK CPI. You see consensus 4.2, consensus 5.2, consensus minus 0.3. We missed consensus on all them. Year over year, total rate 4% versus a consensus of 4.2. Uh, core CPI 5.1 versus 5.2, and then minus 0.6 versus minus 0.3. So inflation across the board lower than anticipated. That has then sent sterling through the floor, which kind of goes in line with that US dollar strength from yesterday. So you can see inflation, big moves across all the currencies. And that's what we were looking at yesterday. We were looking for higher than anticipated CPI prints yesterday. You go long the US dollar, lower than anticipated inflation prints yesterday. You go long stocks. 
in this case you got the bigger move on the dollar which was pretty easy to tell that you would get if you had done your research and obviously listen to the video um <coughs> but your aussie kiwi euro sterling big downside dollar swiss dollar cad dollar yen big upside you look at equity markets the s p the dow jones the nasdaq and the russell all solid downside then that causes the european equities to follow to follow suit with the DAX, the Euro stocks pushing lower. The FTSE, you know, has been trending lower for a while and had continued its move lower post CPI in yesterday's session. You know, it had stronger than anticipated labor market figures, which helped the FTSE lower. Then you come get CPI, which drives global stock indexes lower, which then further fuels downside in the FTSE. But then you get big upside in the FTSE with inflation cooling down quicker than anticipated. It potentially then brings forward the prospect of rate cuts sends sterling down and sends the FTSE higher you can see yields pushing higher in yesterday's session have had a bit of a pullback in um in today's session but again that's just less of a need for interest rate cuts which means those cuts kind of then get priced out which um yeah, is positive for yields yields have to pre reprice higher bonds have to re reprice lower whatever way you want to try and put it that's kind of where we're at at the moment. And those, I mean, you gotta, you gotta back those moves, haven't you? I mean, I don't know about equities. I don't think it changes too much in equities. You know, the next thing that we're gonna get with um the next thing we're going to get from the fed is going to be an interest rate cut whatever way you look at it but um I, stocks are a little bit more of a trickier trade after this i still do think they'll probably rally higher you know still got uh, for all the reasons that i've outlined outlined on, on these videos multiple times I'm not going to rattle through them all again but um i mean i know you got to pull back now but it doesn't really change that much i, I don't think one inflation print really changed that much they're still gonna cut interest rates again i still do think it's probably bullish dollars bullish equities bullish yields really for for the moment i mean we're getting a pullback now do, do these moves get entirely reversed i think i mean <coughs> these, these us dollar pairs certainly rosie and your kiwi are kind of rallying a bit harder than i would expect i mean euro dollars kind of doing what i would expect it to that trend is still firmly to the downside dollar swiss dollar cad boat doing kind of what i would expect dollar yen doing what i would expect but yeah, I mean, whether I don't think it's time just yet to buy back into the dollar. I still do think let it let it let it push lower for for a little bit. But we had weak, uh, weak weak uh, Switzerland weak Swiss CPI yesterday. Uh, Help the Swiss franc lower. That would be a reason to buy dollar Swiss. Inflation this morning is sending cable lower, which is probably then a reason to sell cable with your US dollar strength. So dollar Swiss cable, Euro dollar. I don't like, like flip-flopping now. I still do think sterling's got a bit of upside left in it. I mean, inflation is still sticky. I mean, it's still, like, core CPI is still 5.1%. Total rate is 4%. The only thing that kind of gets in the way of that, though, is this minus 0.6% in the month of January. If that continues at that sort of pace through the month of February, yeah, I mean, we'll have to see kind of come next month but um give us a bit of time to think about storing i do still think euro dollar downside dollar swiss upside probably best way to play it if you're looking for a uh, looking for some australian dollar australian dollar us dollar uh, us dollar strength these equity markets i still do think they probably push higher just offers a dip to buy back into done it um, economic data rest of today not that much you do some gdp figures out of the eurozone kind of some medium impact um us data prints a little bit later on but no, we'll, we'll keep an eye on those gdp figures out of keep an eye on those gdp figures out of um out of europe if they come in negative right if they struggle I think the um they struggle, I think, looking towards Euro dollar shorts would probably be a good idea if they come in higher than anticipated. I mean maybe Euro Swiss, Euro Sterling, but personally I'd sit and hope for some weak figures out of the Eurozone and then probably Euro dollar shorts are on in today's session. So we'll keep an eye on that a little bit later on. And we'll see what we can see what we can do. But I think the moves from yesterday and today, you gotta stay on that side of things. Apart from equity markets, I do think equity markets probably have another attempt higher. Yeah, that's how it's happened before. History does repeat itself. Let's see if it happens again.